Jerry of the Circus. For Jerry of the Circus. Rags. Hey, Rags, where are you? Rags, come here, you. Rags. My golly, he's in the menagerie again. Come on, Rags. Hi there, Slim. How's Jeff this morning? Oh, he's okay. He got a bad kick from that zebra last night. <laughs> but you can't kill off a good menagerie, man. That's good. I'm glad he's all right. Hey, uh, have you seen Rags? Oh, there he is. Rags. What's the matter? I suppose you want to see how everything is in the menagerie den after the blow last night, huh? What? Oh, I see. You think the hippopotamus is gone, huh? Well, she's just taking a swim, that's all. Here, I'll lift you up so you can see. Listen, we'll have right to get around this way. Jumpin' Jupiter. Hey, Andy! Andy! Jiminy, she'll drown the baby hippo. Look, she's holding him underwater. Gee whiz! Andy! Hello, what's wrong? Hey, Andy, quick! The hippo's holding her baby down under the water in the tank. Sure, she often does. You mean she won't drown, Tubby? That punk? I should say not. She's teaching him to stay underwater. Ooh, I sure thought she was trying to drown Tubby all right. <laughs> so you got me all excited for nothing, huh, Rag? You're a false alarm, that's what you are. <laughs> you kids, both of you. There, look. See? She's letting Tubby up. <laughs> Quite a lesson for all of you, eh? I'll say so. Why do the mother hippos duck their babies? Well, you see, a hippo's nostrils are slit, something like a camel. They learn how to close them so no water can get in. Oh. A camel can close his nostrils and keep the desert dust out. Otherwise, he'd often strangle to death in a dust storm. Gee, well, how long can a hippo stay under? Six or seven minutes. Really? Yeah, she just fills her lungs full of air and closes up her nose. Then she drops right down to the bottom of her tank and stays there. <laughs> Golly, that's funny. I'm going to brush her teeth now. Want to stick around? Sure thing. Golly, watch her climb out of that tank. They're sure awkward, aren't they? Yeah. Slim, bring the brushes and a pail of water. We'll scrub her grinder. All right, be right with you. She didn't get excited last night during the windstorm, did she? This old lady? I should say not. Didn't even seem to know anything was going on. It was sure exciting. Your first big blow? Yep. Well, you sure hit a dandy. I'll say. But the way they got things all in order before the audience got out was marvelous. Yeah, I don't believe they even knew we had a bad wind. Show went on just as smooth as ever, and everything all under control when they left. But the animals, uh, golly, I never saw zebras in a panic before. Yeah, those convicts are pesky little animals. Convicts? Sure. Haven't you heard zebras called that before? Well, no, it. At least I didn't know they were referring to zebras. Sure, we often call them that around the circus. On account of their stripes, huh? You guessed it, Jerry. Gee, that's funny. Convicts. Yeah, here's your water and brush, boss. <laughs> Thanks, Slim. Come on, Jerry. We'll do their grinders. See, this is fun. Well, don't they mind? No, I guess they kind of like it. Probably tickles them a little. Anyhow, I never have no trouble. Come on, we'll go right in. You stay outside, Rags. <laughs> don't you worry. Hippos are vegetarian. Yeah, but if she just rolled over by mistake, she'd hurt Rags. I guess you're right there, all right. Come on in. Close the door. Open up. Open up there, old lady. Golly, what a mouth. Like a big cave, isn't it? Yeah, and look at those grinders. See those four tusks in front? Yeah. 
Almost like an elephant. They gotta be scraped every now and then, but it's the grinders that take the most care. Why? You see, bits of hay get around the gums and make them sore. Jiminy, got six of them on each side. Must be pretty awful to have a toothache and teeth that size. <laughs> you bet. That's why we have to be so careful. Wonder how hippos get along when they haven't got a nurse to take care of them. Ha, 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 ha. Nurse to a hippo, that's something. Now we'll get this side and she'll be through. Say, Tubby's a lot darker than his mother. Is that just because he's a baby? No, the blondes are real scarce, and they don't necessarily have white babies neither. Well, you got all their teeth brushed. What you gonna do next? Feed them. Gotta pay them back for being so patient. What's that? Bran mash. They like it, but we don't give it to them every day. Gee, you roll it into a ball, huh? Say, I'll, I'll let me throw them in their mouths. Sure. Hey, no, there you are. Where are you going, buddy? Golly, they chew slowly. <laughs> Who are you looking for? Jerry. Jerry Dugan. Gee, someone for me. Hey, I, I'm here. Just a minute. Guess I'd better go. Thanks for letting me help, Andy. Okay, Jerry. Glad to have you anytime. Shut the door to the cage after you. Bye, Andy, and, and thanks. Come on, Ray. Guess we've got company. Oh, hello, Jerry. They weren't going to let me in. Oh, well, hello, Mr. Grayson. Gee whiz, but I'm glad to see you. You ought to be. I've good news from your uncle. So soon? Gee. Shall we go out in the sunshine? Yeah, let's. Come on, Rags. Is this your dog? He sure is. Rags, meet Mr. Grayson, a friend of mine. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm glad to meet you, Rags. Shake. He's a polite little beggar. <laughs> He'd better be. Didn't I see him in the ring yesterday? Sure, he, he does some turns with bums. I should say he does, and he's good, too. <laughs> Well, what did Uncle Dan have to say? He sent back his notarized signature and told me to go ahead and find out about that box in the bank. He told me to tell you he'd stand good for the bill as soon as he begins making money again. Isn't he swell? Pretty nice, I think. He said he was getting along fine, and for you to be sure and right. Aw, oh, gee, I, I'm awful. I, I want to write, but seems as if I'm always busy, and we keep moving almost every night. I know, it's hard for boys to write letters. But when you've got an uncle like that and he's sick, I think maybe you ought to make a special effort, don't you? I sure do. I'll write him this afternoon. That's fine. I thought you would. Now I've got to have your signature on this same paper with a witness, and then everything will be all fixed up. We we might as well go to the wagon. Guess Bumps will be there. Oh, the clown? Yeah. I'd like to meet him. Oh, he's grand. Kind of fun being with a circus, isn't it? Well, I'll say so. Want to walk around? Sure, I'm not in a hurry. Say, huh, it's pretty quiet in the morning here compared to the excitement during the show in the afternoon. Oh, Sure. Folks write their letters and do their washing and mending and chopping mornings. Like a great big family, isn't it? Yep. Rags, where are you? Come here. What are you doing on the other side of that tent? <laughs> it looks like Rags, a hunting dog. He's a brat. Rags, come here and leave Lulu alone. You know, he, he chases that poor duck every chance he gets. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Oh, you can't blame him for the instinct to chase animals. No, but I can scold him for getting into it and doing it. He's a circus dog, and circus dogs have got a mind. Hey, Mr. Bradley. <laughs> Mr. Bradley. Yes, yes. Who's calling? It's me, Jerry. Your duck's got away again. What? Who, where? Well, here, Lulu. Nice, Lulu. Here, Lulu. <laughs> Look at that duck go. Yeah, she knows his voice all right. Here you are, Lulu. Now, how did you get loose this time? Uh, uh, thank you, Jerry. Why, oh, you're welcome. Say, that's funny. What? That voice. It sounds familiar. Who was it? Well, that's the clown that does the duck trick. Oh, yes, I remember. I saw him yesterday. Funny, though. Hmm. I, I just can't place the voice, though. We'd go around and meet him, but he usually rests mornings. He's kind of old and not too glad to meet people. Awful nice, though. Sure, I know. He likes to read a lot and just rest. See, this is luck. Here comes Mr. Randall. The owner of the show? Yeah. Uh, Mr. Randall. Oh, hello there, Jerry. Say, I I'd like you to meet a friend of mine. Why? I'm glad to meet any friends of Jerry's. This is Mr. Grayson, Mr. Randall. He's a lawyer here in Jackson City. Uh, Grayson, did you say? A lawyer? Yes, at least I'm... Why, what's the matter? Uh, nothing. Uh, never mind, it's of no importance. Mr. Grayson is helping me. Helping you, Jerry? <laughs> what on earth do you need a lawyer for? You see, <laughs> we found out that one of the keys on Dad's key ring that I always carry is a key to a safety deposit box in a bank. Well, you don't say. What bank? Bank in this town. Patsy and I went downtown yesterday and checked. It, it's a long story how we found out about it, but... And a friend of mine in the bank suggested the boy consult me. But, uh, why? It's all rather involved, but 
When a man dies in this state, the box is automatically turned over to the court. And seeing there isn't any will, and I'm underage... It's quite a bit of red tape, but I'm taking it to the Superior Court, and I think it can be arranged for the boy to get possession of the box. Well... So I was just showing Mr. Grayson around a lot. He's crazy about circuses. I certainly enjoyed your matinee yesterday, Mr. Randall. Miss Patsy was kind enough to give me a pass. Oh, well, so that's how you happen to... Yeah. What? Uh, oh, nothing. I, I'm just thinking out loud about something that happened yesterday. I'm sorry. See, Mr. Randall, uh, could... Well, well what I mean, Would it be possible for Mr. Grayson to stay and have lunch with us? Oh, I couldn't impose on Mr. Randall. You shouldn't have asked him, Jerry. Uh, would you enjoy it, Mr. Grayson? Of course. But really, Mr. Randall, I had no intention... Well, of... then you stay. Glad to have you. Well, that's certainly very kind of you. Not at all, not at all. Glad to have you. Well, uh, where are you heading for now? Well, we'd just been kind of walking around and looking at things. But we've got to find bumps, and so... Yeah, well, you go right ahead. I'll see you at lunch. Uh, by the way, Jerry, you haven't seen Johnny Bradley, have you? No, but I just talked to him. Talked to him? Yeah, Rags chased Lulu, and I called him to tell him his duck was loose. Oh, good. Uh, he's in his wagon, then. I've got to see him. See you later, then, Mr. Randall. All right. Thank you, Mr. Randall. Yeah, I'll see you all at lunch. So long. Rags, come on, Rags. Come on, boy. Come on. Ah, call that a narrow escape. Poor Bradley. Hey, good morning, Mr. Randall. Oh, hello, Slim. Is Johnny Bradley still in his wagon? Yep, it looked like he was dozing on his steps there in the sun. Good, I've got to see him. Oh, good morning, Si. Hi, Mr. Randall. Nice day after last night's blow. I don't say so. Oh, hello there, Johnny. Johnny. Johnny Bradley, wake up. Hmm? What? Oh, oh, hello, hello. What's wrong? Uh, sorry to wake you, Johnny, but I'm afraid I've got some important news for you. Oh, it's you, Mr. Randall. Yeah. <laughs> well, looks like I was having a morning's catnap. Uh, Johnny, I, I'm in a hurry, but I have to tell you something quickly. Now, take it easy and don't let it upset you. Something wrong? Well, what is it? Well, I, I, I don't want you to go to the mess tent for lunch. You what? I'll have Shorty bring a tray to you in your wagon. I'm afraid I fail to understand, Mr. Randall. I, uh, I've just met your son. What? Here on this lot. He's, he's where? On this lot. I oh. can't go into a long explanation now, but he's having lunch with Jerry Dugan. And knowing that you sit at the same table, I, I thought I'd better warn you. Oh, I can hardly believe it. My son, I, oh, Mr. Randall, I'm afraid no, I... Uh, easy, easy, old man. But my son here on the lot. Oh, he mustn't see me. He, he mustn't see me. 